What will your taxes look like in 2026? I was just asked to talk about this on the news, so I thought it could be a good video to share with you all of what to expect here in two short tax filing years. And so we have this year and next year where we're gonna see lower tax rates, but then in 2026, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act expires and most people will be left paying about 20% more in taxes if their income is the same. The good news is, is we can plan for that. And that's what we're gonna talk about in today's episode of Joe Knows Retirement. Joe Knows Taxes. Joe Knows the Market. Joe Knows Social Security. Joe Knows Income Planning. Joe Knows Pickleball? No. This is Joe Knows Retirement. So many of you have probably known if you've watched our videos before, and if you haven't watched our videos, you know, you're, you're probably going to enjoy this one here. And if you enjoy this type of content, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll get up to date, you know, basically notifications when we post new videos on this type of content. And then it also allows us to grow our page by other people watching as well. So we can really continue to help people with this information that they're looking for, because as we know, Tax planning is not talked about enough in retirement planning, but also financial planning is not talked about enough and they've never taught you in school. And now there's a ton of baby boomers who are retiring now without knowing what to do. And so what we're really gonna discuss on today's episode is about this Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that's gonna happen in 2026. So you know, if this is something you have not been aware of, then you need to start making sure you're taking action on some of the opportunities that may be at your fingertips because this has been in place since 2017. And so for a lot of our clients, we've been doing these types of strategies for the last six years that we're gonna talk about today to really take advantage of these lower tax brackets, to take advantage of these lower tax rates, to take advantage of these opportunities that we may never see again in our lifetime in my opinion, right? I'm, I'm much younger than most of the people who watch this channel, but I don't even think tax rates will ever be lower in my lifetime, let alone someone who is 60 years old who may not have as long of a lifetime as me. And that's because simply tax rates are on sale right now. And if you look historically, they've been much higher. And so if we just go back to after World War II when tax rates were 94% was the highest tax rate. And then in 1981, the highest tax rate was 69%. And then right now, the highest tax bracket is 37%. So if that's been as high as the tax rate's been in the past, and now we're here, where do you think they're going moving forward? And you know, I'll, I'll show you this chart here that uh, we actually used to show that historical tax rate, but you'll see if you look there right after World War II of where it was 94% and where it was 19, in 1981 where it was 69%, we had a historically really high tax rate environment during those times. And right now, in the past few years especially, tax rates have been very low and they're what I call on sale right now is the is the verbiage I always use. And so I'm the author of a best-selling book called I Hate Taxes and that would be another place to, to start as you're planning for taxes in retirement if you have not done this yet or maybe you're knowing you need to, you just haven't taken those steps. This would be a great tool to really show you the impacts of doing so but also the importance of really acting now and being proactive. But in this book, I tell a story about blueberries. And it's always, it always goes back to my mom, you know, actually works with us at Peak Retirement. Uh, she's my executive assistant. And, you know, I always joke about that one of like, hey, you've been my assistant all my life. There's no difference of you being my, you know, work assistant, right? And so it's really awesome to work with my mom, but also to have that ability, that, that connection that we've built over all these years to be able to really get a lot of things done, you know, not only for our team, but for all the clients that we serve as well. And so I'm very grateful for that. But something about my mom that I have to pick on her about, so again, you, you understand the love I have for my mom, but I gotta pick on her a little bit, is she absolutely loves blueberries. And every time she goes to the store and blueberries are on sale, she just stocks up. But if she goes to the store and blueberries are not on sale, she won't buy any. She, she won't even buy any, she'll go without blueberries. But because she stocks up, her entire freezer is just full of blueberries and she always has enough for when she needs them and she never pays full price because she always just restocks when they do eventually come on sale. And so that's like many of the people we work with. They're, they're, we call them the Midwestern millionaire, right? And, and typically they've got a million or more saved, but also they are Midwestern values, which typically is frugal and hardworking. And uh, you know she definitely resembles that. But if you're that type of person, if you're crazy like my mom, as I always say, then this tax sale that's out here right now is way better than any blueberry sale. And so what I mean by that is we've got to take advantage of this if you really want to save some money because these tax planning strategies that we'll talk about, they're going to save you a lot more money than a few dollars at the, at the grocery store. These are strategies and 
savings that can accumulate over time and could be hundreds of thousands of dollars depending on how much you have saved right now. And the reason why is because most people have all their money in tax deferred vehicles right now. And what happens when we take money from tax deferred vehicles? We have to pay taxes. So when you put that $10,000 into that IRA up front, you got to tax savings on that. But then as this 10,000 grows to 100,000 and you take out 100,000, well now you're going to have to pay taxes on the 100,000. So you saved on 10,000, but now you're paying on 100,000. So we need to really look at this and say, hey, is this really what we want to be dealing with or can we start to do something about it now? And so, you know, I don't want you to make you feel bad if you have all your money in this tax deferred investment in 401k's and IRAs because I am going to argue that you probably have made the right decision over all these years. I remember Tax rates were 94%. They were 69%. And now the highest bracket is 37%. So just think about it. If you do have a large amount in tax deferred, I would argue that you probably did make the right decision in 1981 to defer that tax, right? Because if the tax rate 1981, would you rather pay that tax at 69% or would you rather defer it, which allows you to do so in a 401k, defer it and pay it at a lower tax bracket like a 37% currently? And so these are the opportunities that you currently have in your, your, your tool belt today. So what I'm trying to encourage you of is, hey, yes, you've probably made the right decision in the past, but my question to you, my challenge to you is, if you're okay with me being hard on you, typically the people who watch these videos are okay with me being hard as long as it can lead to them making the right decisions, but are you making the right decision today? And if you are, congrats, great job. You're probably gonna see many benefits moving forward. But if you have not taken advantage of these lower tax rates now and you haven't done anything with this 401k over the past six years especially, you may be missing opportunities. And that's what we're gonna talk about today of what are those opportunities? What can this mean? And that's what we'll, we'll talk about. Uh, and I, and I, this is one of the most popular tax planning strategies and one that I'll go through now. And we're seeing a lot of people take advantage of this, especially those who have been diligent savers, who have accumulated a higher amount in their 401ks, who are in or near retirement at this point. And so this strategy is called a Roth conversion. And we do this strategy with many of our clients. Almost all of our clients do this strategy. So don't take that as advice that, that you should do this. Not everyone should do this, but we are seeing those in those categories that I mentioned that it's almost a, a non-negotiable at this point to take advantage of these types of opportunities, knowing that tax rates are gonna go up in two short years. And so with the Roth conversion, it's a pretty simple conversation. It's let's move money from tax deferred to tax free. Let's move it from an IRA to a Roth IRA. Now, what do we have to do if we do that? Well, we have to pay taxes now. And as I always joke is, you know, do we want to pay taxes now? And of course we do, right? Because we know we have to pay it. I mean, when we signed up for these tax deferred investments, we signed up knowing that Uncle Sam was going to be our partner on these investments. And so the decision that we have to make is, do we want to kick him out now? Or do we want to let him force us to take the money out at a later point? What point is that? That's when you reach required minimum distribution age of either 73 or 75. And that's when Uncle Sam tells you, hey, you've got all these years of saving all this money. Now it's time to pay up. I need your money. I need some revenue. I'm $35 trillion in debt. And this is where they can get some of their revenue. But the good news with you is you have the decision to either do that now or later or over a period of time. And that's typically what we recommend for people to do a Roth conversion is don't do it all up front. Do it over a period of year, but do remember that two years, next two years are going to be much lower than what we're expecting in the future. And then again, what are tax rates going to be after 2026? And if you ask me, I think they're going to be much higher. I've already mentioned the amount of debt, $35 trillion. Uh, I mean, here's the U.S. debt clock that you can see that actually changes every single day. But, you know, I just don't see it changing, right? I don't see that. Uh, we're going to be able to continue going with low tax rates knowing that they have to get revenue because they are overspending and Medicare is underfunded and Social Security is underfunded. And so there's changes that are going to have to be made if we do want to take a stab at this. And there's experts out there that say that if tax rates, if they just double over the next 10 years, then we'll be able to take a real big stab at this debt crisis that we're currently seeing. So I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, don't ask me what the future tax rates are going to be exactly because tax rates are written in pencil and I don't have that pencil. I wish I did just because I read, wrote the book called I Hate Taxes doesn't mean I get to control taxes. Um, and so, you know, you just have to make sure that you're, you're planning for that is ultimately the idea. 
And the other thing we have to understand in 2026 is that there's other taxes changing as well. For example, the standard deduction is one that you really want to make sure you're paying attention to. The standard deduction right now is, is very high uh, for someone who is uh, retired, for example. That's 29200 if you're married filing jointly. If you're single, it's about half of that. Well, understand in 2026, if you go back to 2017, that was about half of what our standard deduction is today. So it was much lower than that in 2017, but in 2026, it'll be adjusted for inflation. So it'll be about half of what we're seeing today. And so for many people, they're thinking, man, that's a big negative, which it could be because 90% of people take the standard deduction a day. So if you just take the standard deduction at that point, you're gonna be left with lesser. The good news for you though, is that you will have more of an opportunity to take itemized deductions again when that time comes back. So you may have to pay a little more to get your taxes done, but you could lead to more tax savings through itemized deductions. Charitable strategies will become more advantageous for you to write off in those instances. Um, and then also uh, the personal exemption will come back as well. So you'll get some more free money from that as well. So just understand that's one change, but also the AMT tax will be changing, uh, which is more advanced tax, but just be aware that that's changing. And then one that's a big one that's not changing like overly dramatically right now, but something to keep an eye on is that estate tax. So the estate tax limits right now are so high. I mean, you're looking at, you know, 13, 14, 15 million dollars per individual right now, uh, just for inflation each year, but they're cutting that in half here in just a couple uh, years. And so, you know, that may still not be a concern for a lot of people because there's less than 1% that have that amount of wealth. But if you're fi following Biden's tax proposals, he's looking to bring that estate tax all the way down to three and a half million dollars, which really now that can start impacting a lot of people who watch these videos who have been that Midwestern millionaire. When you count your house and your investments and all the assets you have, it, you know, we're seeing some people get there at this point in their lives. And then if you look in history for the estate tax, that's been as low as in 2001, it was a million dollars. And in 1997, it was 600,000 was the limit. And so if we go back to 2001, if you're, if you had one, if you had $2 million and you had a million dollars over the limit, as we just discussed, you could be paying a 50% tax rate, a 40 to 50% tax is typically what that's been over time. And so you're paying $500,000 to the government and your kids aren't going to be able to take whatever's left there. You know, you're going to be sending a lot due to that estate tax. It's basically that inheritance tax. And so the good news is, is by planning now and being proactive, you can set up you know, some more sophisticated trusts, you can do some gifting, you can do a lot of other planning, which I've got some other videos on this channel on this concept, uh, but you just wanna make sure you're being proactive. So it may not be something you necessarily have to start planning for today, but you gotta start having this on your radar if you are finding yourself with $3 million or more uh, as an example. So just be aware of all the different taxes outside of just federal taxes. I think a lot of people not don't understand that, you know, the federal tax bracket is, you know, it's great. You know, it's, it's definitely something that we utilize very much so in planning and, and what is indicating how much tax we pay. But that chart doesn't show the impacts of social security taxes. It doesn't show the impact of Medicare premiums that you pay because you can pay more for IRMA, right? You've probably heard that term, I-R-M-A-A. -A, and that's going to allow you to pay more for Medicare if your income's higher. But the tax brackets don't show all those additional taxes or additional penalties that you could be associated with. It doesn't show you capital gains, which again, they've talked about potentially changing as well. And so you just have to make sure you're really understanding how all of this plays together. And that's where a professional team, in my opinion, can really uh, come in to help you at this point. And so, you know, the real big takeaway from this video is just make sure you're being proactive. Start taking advantage of the opportunities today before it's too late, right? If we get five years from the future and you go, oh man, I knew the tax rates are lower. I just, I forgot to do something. I procrastinated. Well, if, if you did that five years ago and you find yourself in the same position, I don't doubt that you could do that again in five years if you don't get moving now. So watching all these educational videos is all great. I love doing them, but I'd rather see people implement it and be able to see the amount of savings they can have over their retirement and then get to see what's being done with those savings. And so with our clients, we always challenge them with, hey, we're looking to save you X amount of dollars on taxes. What are you gonna do with it? You're gonna travel more? You're gonna spend more on the grandkids? You're gonna go you know, buy yourself that new car? You're gonna go give more money away? That's the type of fun that you can see by being tax smart. And, and in my opinion, taxes is the most important part of your retirement. You will spend more money on tax in your retirement probably than anything else if you've been a diligent saver and have a large amount in tax deferred dollars. So why are we not talking about it? Why are we not planning for it? Well, 
now that you've watched this video, I know I've motivated you enough to take action. And I know this first step you want to take is ultimately to, to read my book. And so for those who are watching this video, uh, we'll go ahead and, and, and give you a free copy there. If you just go ahead and request one in the link below, then we'll be able to send you a, a book there and making sure that you get that resource. You know, we didn't write that book to make money and you know, we have made money on it and we're very, very, very grateful for that. But the, the goal of that book was to get that in as many retirees hands or those who are in or near retirement's hands to make sure they know what to do. And I wrote that book very simple and easy to understand. I wrote it from a fourth grade level to make sure that, you know, we're taking these advanced topics that are pretty complex, but making it understandable so you understand what you're taking action on. And that was one of the best advice my mentor gave me as I got in the industry. She's been in the industry for 40 years and she told me, keep everything in a fourth grade level because not everyone specializes in financial planning, not everyone has their CFP credential, not everyone does this every single day, every minute of the day. You need to make sure they understand how this operates because they haven't been taught or they haven't focused on this. And so if that's you, this book would be great. But even if you are more advanced, I still get feedback from people who are extremely smart, even other advisors who read this book who say they've learned new things and they've been able to um, implement some of this strategies that I mentioned in that book. So I think it's a book for everyone. So go ahead and request that and, uh, you know, share with me your thoughts after you read that, you know, just reach out to me and give some feedback or give a review on Amazon of what you think of that book. And uh, we'd love to, to hear your thoughts. So uh, with that being said, pay less in taxes, plan now, and we'll see you on the next video.